Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Angela Cregan. I sit on the not-for-profit group of the Ulster Society. I'm also a partner in Harbinson Mulholland, a currency practice based here in Belfast. I am delighted to be joined today by Mary Nagelli, who is the CEO of Arts and Business, and also Maeve McCurvey, the head of business within Arts and Business, who are going to be discussing in the session today how they have helped local businesses innovate with partnerships with arts organisations. Arts and Business have been um, helping these partnerships happen for over 35 years and have seen the innovation that can happen when our commercial sector and the arts sec and cultural sector come together. We will also hear uh, about their innovative board matching programme who put our future leaders onto boards of uh, local arts organisations and help with the training process to um, give them skills to be able to take up these positions. Um, and we will hear from some of the past members of uh, that uh, board matching programme. And I think as we all try to engage uh, more with our teams internally, I think we'll hopefully find this session invaluable today. So without further ado, I would like to hand across to uh, Mary Nagelli. Hello. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much um, for the warm introduction, Angela, um, and thank you to yourself and to your colleagues at the Ulster, Ulster Society of Chartered Accountants Ireland to the invitation to Arts and Business to partner with you today on this Connecting with Culture webinar. Um, my colleague Maeve McCurvey, who's with me today, our Head of Business, and I are really delighted to be here and uh, I'd just like to say thank you to everyone that has given their time uh, to, to log in to the webinar today to hear um, what we have to say. Um, I thought it would be useful for me to just start by giving um, our uh, attendees today uh, just an overview and an introduction to arts and business uh, to really put in context uh, where today's event fits within that. And then I will hand over to Maeve and Maeve will do a sort of deeper dive into how we specifically work with the private sector and our private sector members. Maeve is then going to chair a panel discussion and we're really uh, delighted to have two of our business members with us today. And they are Ashling Byrne from ANL Goodbody and Stephanie Fitzsimons from PricewaterhouseCoopers. And they're going to share their experiences uh, both for their business and also for them as professionals uh, individually in relation to how they've engaged with arts and with uh, some of our programmes. So just by beginning, as I said, by giving uh, everyone that very broad introduction to arts and business. So we are a registered charity and we are a sector resource organisation that supports the arts and cultural sector uh, in Northern Ireland, primarily with their governance and with their income diversification strategies. Also, as a creative membership network, we work with almost 200 private sector and cultural businesses, and that's to deliver a range of strategic programmes really across three key areas. The first one is very much about championing and celebrating creativity. The second was about fostering partnerships and igniting um, connections across our networks. And that is really very much what today's event is part of. And then the third would be very much about supporting the sustainability of the sector, uh, particularly with that diversification of income. So through a program of support that we offer, um, cultural organisations can receive training and advice and support in governance, say, and in income diversification. We are we're really proud to have received the first strategic grant from the Northern Ireland Dormant Accounts Fund for a five year financial growth programme called Blueprint. And that's really to support cultural organisations in Northern Ireland uh, with that income diversification and long term financial sustainability. So, as I say, today's event very much drills down into um, those themes of champion creativity and what it can do for business and then also about igniting and fostering those connections. Uh, before I hand over to Maeve, um, I think uh, my colleagues wanted me to highlight that in terms of if anyone has any questions later for the Q&A, if they put them in the, the Q&A uh, box um, on the channel. 
So uh, as I say, I'm going to hand over to Maeve now and Maeve will give you a little bit more detail into how we work with our business members. So thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Delighted to be here, as Mary says, and thank you for the invitation. Um, so I'm just going to give you an overview of how we typically work with our business members before then um, having a chat with both Ashleen from ANL Goodbody and Stephanie from PwC. So typically how we work with our business members, we will meet with them and basically we're all about coming up with ideas, be that uh, in relation to community engagement or brand alignment or staff engagement and support. Um, we're here to provide basically support and advice in relation to any creative partnerships that you might be thinking about. We also schedule a, a program of events and networking opportunities throughout the year. Hopefully some of you have been along at a few of those. Um, I'm just going to talk about a, a few examples in particular be before we come on to our panel chat. So we know from um, the, the wider business community that attracting and retaining talent is a key issue for many of our businesses. Um, we had connected Baker Tilly Mooney Moore. I'm sure uh, you're possibly familiar with them, a medium sized accountancy practice um, here in Belfast. Uh, they wanted to address the issue of attracting more applications. Obviously, they're up against the big four. Um, we had connected them with Bounce Culture uh, and together they uh, developed a, a programme of graduate podcasts where uh, the podcasts receive training um, how to actually script and deliver podcasts, which was then used as part of the recruitment process. Uh, and it was hugely successful. Um, they saw an increase in their applications. Uh, we followed that up then. We had connected them with Belfast Exposed. Um, and mm -hmm. based on Belfast Exposed Wellbeing Through Photography programme, um, the, the graduates from Baker Tilly worked with Belfast Exposed, um, basically it's on a recruitment campaign. Um, and the amazing outcome from that partnership was that Baker Tilly saw an increase of 67% in applications to their, their organisation. So, so certainly those creative partnerships ha had a huge impact for Baker Tilly. If we come then to EDI and wellbeing again, we know from discussions with our business members, this is another key area of concern and priority for many. Um, back in 2018, we had connected City with Tinderbox. City wanted um, to schedule some activity to mark World Mental Health Day. Um, and for the first time ever in any city office globally, um, Tinderbox performed a live drama in their canteen, The Man Who Fell to Pieces. Um, it, it was around uh, the invisibility of mental health. Um, uh, and what was lovely about the, this uh, project was they followed up the live performance with a QA and a um, with the creative director, with City's mental health nurse and the cast um, of the play. Uh, and it was incredible to see how, how the, the 120 people's um, city staff present and how they totally opened up to the whole theme and spoke about very personal um, issues. Um, following that then, they, they programmed uh, perception workshops, nine perception workshops across the four city offices, uh, and that very much focused on diversity and inclusion uh, and uh, allowed them to celebrate their own unique identities, uh, which was pretty important for city. They have 40 different nationalities in their Belfast offices. Um, and also to respect that. Um, so again, lovely partnership. Um, the final one then, cultural brand alignment. Um, Perspective Economics is quite a, an interesting organisation in that they're small. You know, they've got six employees, um, but they're huge advocates for the arts here in, in Northern Ireland. Um, they do quite a lot of, of government work. So as part of... Uh, when they're bidding for tenders, that they have to demonstrate social value. So, so they align both of those elements and supported Cathedral yeah. Quarter Arts Festival with creative bursaries. Um, they're into the second year of this now. 
and what's lovely about this project is um, they enabled five creatives to develop their work and actually bring it not just for performance at Cathedral Quarter Arts Festival, but this picture is from Scaredy Fat. And it actually went on to sell out tours in both Edinburgh and Dublin Fringe, which, which is just fabulous. Um, I'm going to come on now and talk a wee bit about our Leaders on Art Sports programme, which is a board matching programme uh, we've been running now for quite a few decades. Uh, hugely popular and um, we're delighted to say that quite a few financial organisations have come through PwC, submit um, people every year to it. Uh, we've had ASM accountants, PGR accountants, we've had InvestNI, Strategic Investment Board, quite a range of, of organisations. So essentially, um, we, we encourage applications to the programme um, and then provide, we will interview applicants just to really understand what their areas of interest is in the arts and also their skill set. And then using that information, uh, we will recommend some boards that we feel uh, could be a good match for them. Um, but before actually the matching process, we provide in-depth training, um, covering the, the, the basics, if you like, of, of good governance, um, the, the financial role of trustees. We provide insights into our arts and culture sector here in Northern Ireland. Uh, we provide advocacy training um, and, and once our candidates undergo the training at that stage, then we will introduce them to some uh, boards that they could pe possibly join. So it, what, what we typically find is the mm -hmm. people to apl who apply to this programme, it's not just a professional development programme, an opportunity to gain that non-executive trustee experience and leadership skills. But what we tend to find is that they've actually had a, some some element of creativity in the background. Maybe they did ballet or they played in the local orchestra or they danced and then they got to uni and everything went on pause or career started. So so it's a lovely opportunity for folk to reconnect again with their, their creative side. Um, so that that's just a quote from PwC, as I say, PwC typically put five or six people through this every year. They're very much regarded as a learning opportunity. Um, and in their mind, um, it's a very good base for future leaders and potential board members of PwC. We will be sharing the, this PowerPoint with all attendees afterwards. So you'll be able to read that in detail. But what's quite exciting is... Um, Basically, just to give you a little bit of background, we're about to launch a new programme for this year, Financial Leaders on Arts Boards. Um, obviously, we've come through COVID now uh, and what we have tended to find with a lot of our arts boards is board members stayed on to, to get arts organisations through the pandemic. And now that we hopefully have come out the other side, we're seeing that quite a few now are stepping away. And there's a particular opportunity now for treasurer positions on arts boards, which is quite exciting. Um, so what, what we have agreed is uh, applications are now open uh, and will remain open for the next month, closing the 31st of March. Uh, we will be providing one full day training in April, TBC. Um, and that's going to cover all the, the elements required of a non-executive trustee, the, the fundamental uh, legal requirements, financial requirements. And I'm delighted that, that Angela from Harvinson is going to be facilitating that financial training. Thanks so much, Angela. Um, and also advocacy training. Programme costs are detailed there for members, arts and business members. The cost is £400 discounted and for non-members £500. And um, to apply, um, I think Gary's going to very kindly in the chat posting uh, the link to our website, um, which gives a little bit of background to the programme and also the application form. It's a very straightforward application form. Um, it's really just uh, lean to, to, to find out a wee bit about your skill set and also your particular interest in the arts. 
Um, and for anybody who wants to find out a wee bit more or is interested, please contact me. I'm very happy to have a chat with you. Um, so now we're going to come to our panel discussion. So I'm delighted to welcome mm -hmm. Ashleen from ANL Goodbody and Stephanie from PwC. Hi, everyone. Hi, Ashleen. Uh, hi, um, so if I could come to you first, Ashleen, um, ANL Goodbody actively partner with the arts. And in fact, they won our Business of the Year Award in 2020. Congratulations. Just interested to know um, if you could maybe share what drives those creative partnerships at ANL Goodbody. Yeah, thanks, Maeve. So um, the the award was in 2020, just before I joined. I joined in 2021. But so nothing to do with you then, nothing actually? Nothing to do with me. <laughs> I, mean, I can't take any credit for it. But I suppose when I landed, I realised that there was a, a genuine interest an appetite yes. in supporting the arts, which, mm -hmm. which is really important. I mean, across a workforce of 130 people, you know, you're going to uh, naturally get interest in all types of arts. We have a, a book club. There are people interested in theatre, people who've mm -hmm. been dancers, like you described, Maeve. Mm -hmm. um, myself, I have an interest in the visual arts. So mm -hmm. across the, the workforce, um, we've got a group of people who, who genuinely want to be involved and support the arts, which I mm -hmm. think is key. Mm -hmm. But I think in terms of a firm perspective, you know, you've described the benefits, Maeve, in terms of EDI engagement, mm -hmm mental health and well-being mm -hmm. and any of the partnerships that we've entered into I think have been symbiotic and we have got more of it as a firm out of it than than perhaps we've even put in um, and I know some of the sessions that we've we've run with local artists for example and people have produced some work mm -hmm. have been really beneficial and people have really in, enjoyed it and it's been good from a you know an engagement perspective mm -hmm. internally and then I suppose from our CSR perspective, um, corporate social responsibility is a big issue for, mm -hmm. for all organisations and businesses. And we want to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And we want to do that by by supporting local um, arts organisations as much as we can. Mm -hmm. well, that's brilliant. And obviously you famously partnered with the Lyric on Good Vibrations. I still fist pump every time I, I think about that yeah. final final scene. Just interested, maybe if you could expand a wee bit on, on why ANL Good Buddy particularly partnered on that project, please. Yeah, so again, if that was before my time, but <laughs> the, the timing of this event today is quite interesting in that we are going to the Lyric this evening to watch but Little Women. Ah, oh, fabulous. Um, so we're bringing clients mm -hmm. to the Lyric. So that's mm -hmm. that's another partnership with the Lyric. Mm -hmm. um, we're really excited to do it. Um, it's created a great buzz in the office mm -hmm. um, and people are really looking forward to it. So mm -hmm. I suppose, you know, going back to Good Vibrations again, um, it was it was just such an exciting thing to be involved in. And even years later, people still talk about yeah. Good Vibrations good vibrations yeah. Yeah, it was and iconic clients, really yeah, yeah clients who were at the event really enjoyed it and um it was something a little bit different mm -hmm. um and you know law firms maybe have a a reputation for being a little bit more stuffy um so it was yeah. i think good to show that you know we, we were interested in get in touch with your punk rebel exactly. yeah <laughs> approved yeah. totally ashlyn yeah um we had also connected uh, ANL Good Buddy a number of years ago with Belfast Exposed. I know you were keen to um, introduce artwork mm -hmm. into your Belfast offices. And I know there were a few sort of additional layers to that. Just interested to know, you know, what, what was the impact of that having original artwork throughout the offices? Yeah, so again, before my time, but arose as a result of an office refurbishment mm -hmm. and maybe some thought as to how we're going to fill the walls and and, and what that's going to look like. Mm -hmm. And one of our partners, Mark Thompson, has a particular interest in photography. Okay. And I think that led to mm -hmm. um, us exploring a partnership with Belfast Exposed. And mm -hmm. we now have some fabulous um, photographic work um, in all of our meeting rooms. So... Mm -hmm. Again, it was a great opportunity just to uh, explore that relationship with Belfast mm -hmm. Exposed um, and also to put interesting work on the walls. That's a talking piece mm -hmm. for clients when they come into Absolutely. the office um, and to be able to show that we're given that support. Mm -hmm. And I think that's led then to us 
subsequently holding some events in the Belfast oh, Exposed right. States, mm -hmm. which again is lovely and, mm -hmm. and something a little bit different. Mm -hmm. So I think that's worked really well, but peaked probably by by the interest of one of our partners in, 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 in photography, which I think is sometimes the way these partnerships arise. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's that uh, personal interest that drives it forward. Yeah. yeah, we find that actually quite a lot. So if we move on now to our Leaders on Arts Boards programme, I'm going to take you back a wee bit further, Ashley, this time. Uh, you actually came through our Young Leaders on Arts Boards, I think it was 2012. Correct. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Yes. So yeah. um, and at that stage, you were matched with Belfast Print Workshop, where I know you served a term. Just interested if you could tell us a wee bit about that experience, Ashley. Yeah, alas, no longer in the young category, but I uh, have <laughs> very fond <laughs> memories <laughs> of that experience. So mm -hmm. going right back, Maeve, to actually the training before mm -hmm. um, I started in, mm -hmm. in the um, print workshop. And I remember the lovely Tanya Carlisle, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, who used to be with you um, delivering training. That was just, I think... Tanya obviously had a theatrical streak and, mm -hmm. and she brought the training to life. And mm -hmm. I thought, if this is the training, then I'm really excited about yeah. the, the partnership. Uh -huh. And then that that didn't disappoint um, because I sat on the board of Belfast um, Print Workshop for a number of years. Mm -hmm. um, and again, I got more benefit out of it, I think, than than the time that I had to invest and that I met mm -hmm. really interesting people on the board that I would never have come across in mm -hmm. my day-to-day -day working life mm -hmm. um, and I was exposed then obviously to the to the work that they were producing mm -hmm. and the exhibitions mm -hmm. um, and it sort of piqued an interest in 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 print for me mm -hmm. um, and it gave me a flavor of what it was like to be involved in the running of an organization mm -hmm. you know sort of at a maybe a younger age when I wouldn't have been exposed to that experience mm -hmm. so um, I can only say good things about that experience it was really beneficial and useful brilliant brilliant and we'll fast forward 11 years and ANL Good Buddy very kindly came on board as our partner for our leaders on arts boards last year. Thank you so much. And and you now are facilitating the training for our young leaders. So it's funny how it comes full circle, but just interested to know maybe why you know, ANL Good, Good Body did decide to come on board as our partner on that programme might be quite interesting for people to hear. Yes, probably some of the good memories um, mm -hmm. that I was able to relay um, and the benefit that I had got uh, mm -hmm. from it. Mm -hmm. um, and and then we were keen to engage with you, uh, Maeve and Mary, and see what we could do. And mm -hmm. that seemed like the natural fit mm -hmm. that we could give something back, uh, having been through the, pro the process myself mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then just getting to meet all the young people who come into mm -hmm. our office um, and to have a chat with them and get a flavour of their backgrounds mm -hmm. and connect with them and mm -hmm. just hear different stories again although we're delivering the training we're, we're getting a lot back um, mm -hmm. in doing that too mm -hmm. so we're delighted to be involved no well well we're oh, obviously delighted to have you as partners Ashley. thank you and in fact i think it's worthwhile mentioning you're back for more you you're now have just completed our business leaders and art sports program and yeah. are in the process of being matched hopefully with um a new arts organization so exciting times and yeah. uh, great great to have you on the program thank you so much Ashley. so if we move now to Stephanie, please. Hi, Hello. Stephanie. How are you? Good, thanks. Hi, thanks. Hi, Stephanie. Yeah, great to see you. So again, Stephanie, you came through our Young Leaders in Arts Sports back in 2021. Just interested maybe to hear why did you apply to the programme? Yeah, I think I, I resonated quite a lot with what you said, Maeve, about that sort of typical journey that some mm -hmm. people go through. Um, it's exactly what happened to me. I sort of had always been interested in arts. I did arts in school. I actually did art in university as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And then sort of moved on to doing sort of chartered exams, which I don't think is as unusual as a path as it sounds. I know a lot of people with similar mm -hmm. backgrounds. Um, And I think this was the first time that the sort of two paths have had crossed with each other um mm -hmm. I had kind of got swept in in my exams and my work 
a lot of years had went by since sort of I had any sort of participation in the arts. Mm-hmm. Um, COVID definitely changed that. I think mm-hmm. suddenly I had a lot more time. I was painting again, which I hadn't done in years. Mm-hmm. And then this was just a really well-timed opportunity to sort of bring those two skills together. And I don't, I've never seen it anywhere else. I don't think it exists anywhere else. And I just mm-hmm. can turn down the chance to sort of get that side of the things that I enjoy back up and mm-hmm. running again. Mm-hmm. No, that's brilliant to hear. And actually you're right, Stephanie. It's it's incredible how many applications we receive each year from people who have had a similar tra- trajectory to you, you know, that arts background. And then they've gone down the road of, becoming a chartered accountant or perhaps a lawyer, you know, professional. Mm-hmm. Um, so if we can maybe just chat a wee bit about the training. I know you underwent the training. Um, just wondering, I mean, how equipped did you feel at the end of that training to actually join um, a board? Yeah, I think the training was really good. Um, it was really interactive, really discussive. Mm-hmm. Like I think it it quickly established a very safe space. You know, you were mm-hmm. suddenly with a lot of other people who had never experienced what it was like to be on a board. Mm-hmm. So it felt like you could ask all your stupid questions. There was people there who had such depths of experience in this. And it felt like it was a really good place to start and I think what we took away from that was a lot of fundamental information on sort of the role of the board the governance things that we don't necessarily come across every day and I think it sort of gave me a network of people obviously you guys at arts and business as well Mm -hmm. suddenly you had this network you had your peers you had Rosie at Carson McDowell who Mm -hmm. obviously was great at doing the training Mm -hmm. and I think you you went on to a board feeling like you were really well equipped and had people behind you to do it and I think that took away a lot of the anxiety for me I don't think Mm -hmm. if it was a sudden opportunity to just do this I think I'm the type of person that would be quite hesitant but suddenly I felt like I had this training this network and felt like I could do it now properly Mm -hmm. and felt really confident going in which was great. No, that's brilliant to hear. And I know you did just briefly touch there on the night networking element. We know from discussions with our leaders in arts boards that that's, I think, especially for the young leaders, Mm -hmm. uh, the whole developing the network is, you know, it's a key part of the programme. Just interested. Was that your experience, too? Yeah, I think it's it's one of those things where when you speak to sort of senior people in your company, they talk about their career journey and the sort of the people that they met along the way. And I think it was an opportunity to meet more sort of diverse people. We mm-hmm. had people that were lawyers, marketers, HR. Um, and it's sort of the, the messaging is that you get to know these people. They move along their career the same way that you do. And then suddenly when you're down the line and you're in Ashling's position, you have these people that you did this program with yeah. all those years ago and you still have that network. And it's that sort of an additional opportunity. And when you're sort of going through something together as well, I think it brings a lot more to it than sort of if you meet people at one event and don't see them again. It's Absolutely. a lot more in depth and you're actually sort of forming relationships with these people, which I think was really important. Yeah. Um, and you were placed with Prime Cup Productions. Just uh interested to hear how how has that experience been for you yeah I think Prime Cut has been an amazing board to join um you know it's it's been fantastic to obviously I feel like the biggest benefit for me is is getting to see all these productions that they put together but to suddenly be behind the scenes and see the work that goes in and what this team does to put Mm -hmm. these together to then see it all come together on open night it's just amazing and it's been such a highlight for me and I think sometimes when I went into it I had a slight worry that when the rest of the board are so into the arts and in that sector Mm -hmm. you kind of worry that you know what am I going to be able to do to sort of make a difference Mm -hmm. and I think it became evident really quickly that people from different backgrounds is is sort of what they need and Mm -hmm. I think they were really appreciative of my financial background and Mm -hmm. I sort of take for granted the networks I have and what I can bring to them from a completely different perspective Mm -hmm. um so that's been really great I think the team are are fantastic at at the sort of all the management accounts and the budgets and it's having that extra set of eyes to even show when you ask a question they can really clearly articulate back Mm -hmm. that answer and it's that sort of security to them and to the board that 
we have people on this and and it works really well and mm -hmm. they're just they're a well-oiled machine and they're they're a great one yeah. to to have joined so i was really grateful mm -hmm. Uh, and you, again, you've briefly touched on it there, Stephanie, but you took on the role of treasurer uh, quite, not quite recently. You've been in role a wee while now. Yeah. Um, might be quite interesting for people on the call just to hear what, what exactly that entails, please. Yeah. And I think it's uh, sometimes it seems a bit scary putting that name on it, treasurer. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah. I definitely don't think it was. Um, again, I think I was probably capable of a lot more than I knew that I was. Mm -hmm. And it can be as simple as sort of when you're going through their management accounts, mm -hmm. small things, small questions, sort of reassurances that you can give them. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of being reactive and adaptive to what comes mm -hmm. up. You know, we recently went through a sort of phase where we were coming up to our audit um, and I don't work in audit. I never have. Mm -hmm. But they had questions that I find that even if I didn't know the answer to mm -hmm. immediately, I was able to take that away and come back and mm -hmm. and you know, from knowing lots of people on boards in similar situations, you know, suddenly I had benchmarks that I could give them. I had names of people they could speak to. Mm -hmm. And it's that sort of reactive to what they need. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes that's beyond finance as well, you know, in, mm -hmm. in these big firms like PwC, you know, for example, we do a lot of around AI. Um, mm -hmm. So very recently we were, we were going through reviewing our policies and procedures and we were able to sort of run that through an AI system and suddenly we had an output that as a board we could review rather than mm -hmm. that sort of usual reading 300 pages of documents. Yeah. So it's all of those things that you sort of, you take for granted and suddenly you do them every day. You don't even realize you mm -hmm. have the capability of offering them to people. And, and that's sort of what that turns into. Mm -hmm. um, might be quite interesting for folk to hear, Stephanie, what, what's the actual time commitment? Obviously you're a non-executive trustee of Prime Cut, you're the treasurer, possibly involved in a few subcommittees, I'm guessing maybe the audit committee. Um, just if you could maybe share what, what the actual time commitment is, please. Yeah, um, it's not in any way extensive. So we have sort of six formal board meetings a year. Um, they're generally maybe an hour to 90 minutes. Um, we have one AGM, which again, we generally tack on to the top of a board meeting. So that's maybe an extra half an hour. Um, we are in the process of getting our subcommittees up and running again. So TBC, okay. I, I know personally, obviously I'll be involved in either the finance or audit one. Mm -hmm. So it's not like it's you're on 10. It's not a lot of additional time. And then outside of that, you can sort of, it's very minimal replying to emails. Sometimes there's questions. Again, mm -hmm. I could probably count the amount of times that I've done that. It's not extensive at all. Um, and then obviously the best part is going to the shows and, and things mm -hmm. like that, which obviously I'm very happy to do. So I don't count that as the, the time. Yeah. Out. Well, obviously, that, that's a key element, though, for, for anybody considering joining the board of an arts organisation, that advocacy piece where you yeah. actually show up for their productions or events or whatever it is. So just one final question for you. Would you recommend to other people joining our Leaders in Arts boards? program and why yeah I, I think I definitely would um I think it's a sometimes you're at the risk of not signing up for these things because you're worried that you can't do it and I think in this case it's just a great example of you have so many resources before you go anywhere near a board you go through the sort of the board matching program that you said may have like it, it's so tailored to who you are as a person and you're purposely matched with an organization that you have an interest in that speaks mm -hmm. to you you know you're not it's not something that you're doing just as a tick box it's a, a giving up your time and mm -hmm. it's also a way to sort of really take something of your own ownership you know I think to do something like this it kind of it shows who you are as a person um, mm -hmm. and it's just the soft skills that you develop as well and also just that accountability you know in our day-to-day -day jobs especially as the young professionals, we have a lot of seniors above us, you know, this is a chance to sort of do something out on your own to mm -hmm. take responsibility for it and to, to really step up. And I, I think you, when you put yourself in those positions, um, you become really surprised at what you're capable of. And mm -hmm. I don't think you know that until you try. Um, and a few years ago, I definitely wasn't the type of person that would do something like this. Mm -hmm. So this has really changed for me. This is why I'm such an advocate for mm -hmm. if you don't think you can do it, then I think you, you should and you'll be really surprised. 
No, that is absolutely brilliant, Stephanie. And we're absolutely delighted to have you part of our arts and business family. Now, thank you very much. Yeah. So um, I'm just going to hand over now to Angela again. Angela, you're going to chair the Q&A session. I am indeed. Thank you. Um, thank you to Stephanie and Ashley. It's really interesting. And um, I know there's lots of points that have come up there that I couldn't agree more with. And, and I've seen the power in the room by presenting some of that financial um, side on that, you know, the board matching program. You can just see the power in the room, the questions that are asked and the willingness. So it's great to see that. Uh, just a wee reminder for anybody that's on the call, please do put your questions into um, the Q and answer, uh, question and answer box. Now, I do have a couple of questions um, and the first one is for you and um, it's just really what sort of advice would you give to a business who's considering possibly doing a partnership or engaging um, with a cultural organisation you know what advice would you give to them? Did you, was that for us sorry and should I miss uh, No sorry us? it was for Aileen. Aileen. Oh yeah Ashley. Okay. Or, Ashley. No problem. Ashley. <laughs> <laughs> no, no problem. Um, I mean I suppose maybe the first thing to do is just to canvas the workforce and see where the interest lies you know when when you're thinking about a creative partnership you want to make sure that that it reflects the interest and the buy-in from from your workforce now obviously that's going to be more difficult in bigger workforces but if you're in a smaller organization i suppose getting the buy-in means sort of handing over the decision in a sense to the employees so maybe that's one thing to think about um and maybe just selling the benefits um, to the workforce in terms of, you know, mental health and well-being, and maybe making them aware of of, of how it, it will help everybody within the organization, which I, I think it ultimately does. And, you know, Stephanie's articulated very well how it's, you know, it, it's benefited her. So um, I think if you can even harness people who have been involved and maybe bring them in to speak to your to your mm -hmm. workforce and, and and maybe that's a good way you know by by live learned examples um and if people will showcase you know how it's worked for them i think that's another maybe another thing that could be considered yeah, that would, that would be helpful. I know we did actually internally um a couple of quite a few Christmases ago. We recorded a bit of a Christmas video, and there was a wee bit of resistance internally. Mm -hmm. I think it was well, it's not my but mm -hmm. but it really brought everybody together. Mm -hmm. and the yeah. Excitement then, whenever we we watched it at the end, you know, the power and and the room was was amazing. So as much as you know, we got out of it just the you know the the, the team part of it. It was great. It was really good. Uh, Stephanie, one for you then, just has your experience on the board as a non-exec director, has it helped you in your day job? I think you've talked a lot about how you've been able to bring your skills and all of that. So has it transferred the other way? Uh, yeah, it, it definitely has. Um, I think for me, the big, the confidence piece was always a big one. Um, I think suddenly you, you have this responsibility and this accountability that I think it gives you a lot more confidence to simple things to to speak up in meetings to know that you're sort of capable of of leading calls of leading sort of groups you know the mm -hmm. subcommittees you can sort of take that on um and it gives you like i've said it's it's a safe space to practice i know sometimes doing these things in an office environment with people that are your seniors and you work with every day sometimes you can be a bit hesitant whereas if you sort of have that experience of doing it on this board grow in this confidence and then suddenly i feel like you're you're putting your hand up a lot more to take on things that maybe you wouldn't have before so it translates absolutely both ways um both soft skills and technical skills and that sort of advisory piece as well which i think mm -hmm. we take for granted that you know getting in front of diff people from different backgrounds learning what people need and, and being adaptive is a, is a big thing that i've learned having to mm -hmm. to think on your feet and maybe not be as as well scripted as we can be in an office environment yeah absolutely no i think that's great and the power as you say i think of, of the exposure to to people that you're not normally in your day job it's it's amazing mm -hmm. i do i sit in the board of actually mental health myself and that's what i have found with the interest just and the conversations before the board meetings and, and yeah. any of the owners we're fortunate enough to have it's great it's really good thank you um mary or Maeve, for anybody i suppose in, that's interested in becoming a business member of arts and business how do you go about that process yeah, well, um, Maeve and I would be delighted to to meet with anyone and to talk to them directly. And I think hopefully from what Maeve highlighted mm -hmm. earlier, I, I think the kind of key message is that it's a very bespoke mm -hmm. um, way to support your organisation. So there's no one size fits all here, but that's a, a, a real benefit. 
and hopefully from hearing from particularly our two business speakers, Ashling and uh, Stephanie, you'll see that there's really multi-layered ways that this can benefit mm -hmm. the business. You know, the NL Goodbody example of how they took that, you know, in terms of entertaining clients, then that kind of animating the workplace with the, the art on the walls. And then right through to that kind of professional development and adding value within within the workplace and, and developing and just then bringing that creative ener energy back into the team. You know, so um, I think really the answer to the question is, please talk to either of us, you know, um, you know, it, it can be it seem like a kind of an overwhelming thing. And where, where would that work for my business? I think the answer is, you know, it can be really tailored to what your business needs and what your priorities or challenges are. And uh, because we've worked with we work with 120 arts organizations mm -hmm. and we've worked for over 35 years. So we have so many examples of how this has worked for many different types and sizes of business. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great, great. Uh, we do have a question in um, that I've got in the question box here. So the question being, trustees can be liable for community stroke charity debts. What reassurance can be given to for this concern for someone who's considering going on to an arts board? Um, I mean, I'm happy, I suppose, to you know to touch on that. I suppose from my um, I suppose financial uh, background and um. You know, in terms of going on to board, you want to be very careful. I suppose initially you would have a look, review um, the finances there and make sure that there's robust systems in place and have a chat with the existing trustees on there. The type of entity that the charity is operating in as well is also key to that. If it happens to be a company limited by guarantee, there is actually a limit then to the exposure um, to the trustees. And really, the financial processes should be in place. Uh, you would hope the organisation is trading as a, a going concern, and you're able to see finan financials that are showing that you know the, the the cash is there for them to continue to operate. And I could understand, I suppose, it being a wee bit of concern before you would join. But I think you know you would take it all into consideration before you would take that post on. Um, I don't know Thank if there's anything else, Mary or Mary, would like to add to that. Yeah, I would just say absolutely what you have said, Angela, and I think. You know, as a couple of the um, graduates from the, the Young Leaders Programme have highlighted, that's why we do a lot of that work in advance and sort of, you know, with the, the governance training and the advice and just we do a governance health check as well on all the organisations that we place graduates from that programme onto. Um, but yeah, as you said, it's doing that due diligence in advance. And then we would also recommend an observation period where you would observe the first board meeting as well before you officially register as a director we actually recommend two observations yeah even better you know, me, so, absolutely. Um, and that's designed to you know, give that little bit of exposure yeah. to the actual arts organization the board before committing mm -hmm. to join legally yeah no, that's great. And hopefully that answered the question. If not, um, our contact details will be circulated um, after the meeting. So do feel free to get in touch if it is uh, a matter of concern. So in turn, we've no additional questions in there. So it probably just remains for me to say thank you very much to everybody on, on here. I think it's been very useful. And I think sharing the contact details and the shared experiences there, it's invaluable. And certainly, I mean, we... As a member of uh, arts and business, arms and well, you know, have I've got a lot out of it, and also me personally in terms of helping the finance side of the the board and you know attending the awards and seeing those partnerships yeah. and where they can work. And I attended a breakfast on one occasion, and I think it was actually Farron's use a partnership with, and it was actually right. Right. Um, some some of the guys came out and, and painted the the hoardings on the outside of the uh, the boards that were up. Um, so I think it was a hospital at the time. That's and, right. The board, you know, so and I remember you said the resistance of the guys maybe there's who are on the construction side in their hard hat to come in and do a wee bit of art but actually what they got out of it was great so mm -hmm. I think and we're all looking for new ways to engage you know retain employees and mm -hmm. um, you know so it's something that we bit different so I'd certainly encourage everybody to to consider it so thank you very much really much appreciate and thank you to everybody that joined today